Today's video is sponsored by Epidemic Sound. It's an unfortunate truth that not everybody has the budget to hire a composer for every one of their YouTube videos. Well, I certainly don't, which is why like most people, I resort to royalty-free music providers like Epidemic Sound. But the problem with not having music custom composed for your videos is how they rarely fit in terms of duration. So in this video, I'm going to show you all my little editing tricks to make the songs fit. Now, this typically involves overcoming two challenges, which is hiding the cuts where you join two sections of a song together and ending the track gracefully. With any song, there's always one option that I like to consider first, which has the potential to solve both these problems at the same time. And that's using the track's original opening and original ending, so just trimming out the middle part. This way, you don't have to worry about how you're gonna end the song, just how you're gonna join the two parts of the same song together. Before I go ahead and show you how that's done, sometimes if you spend a little bit more time looking, you could potentially find a track that coincidentally fits your video perfectly. I know it's a time-consuming process, but Epidemic Sound, who are our amazing sponsors today, have a library of over 35,000 tracks, so there's bound to be a track in there somewhere that's at least close to being a perfect fit for your videos. If you need a very specific duration, you could always use the duration filter to to narrow down your search. Every track you find on Epidemic Sound is all quality music made by real musicians commissioned by Epidemic Sound, which gives us, the users of the music, maximum peace of mind because that means Epidemic owns 100% of all their songs, so there is no way we will ever run into any copyright issues for using Epidemic's library. But let's say in that library you stumbled upon that one track that you really, really want to use for your video, but it's too long. So let's use this track here for example. This is an easy example because it's got very prominent beats, see? Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And you can even see the beats very clearly on the waveform. So the idea is to line the beats up as you're joining the tracks so that the rhythms sync up as opposed to just having an uncarefully placed crossfade, which I'm gonna show you here. So let's say I do a very lazy way of shortening a track, I just kind of layer them on top of each other and pull this really long crossfade between them. Let's play that and listen to how that sounds like. Okay, I'm just gonna stop it there because that sounds absolutely terrible. So that's not gonna work because doing it that way sounds incredibly messy and it messes up the tempo. So let's say I want to cut this track down, which is just over three minutes down to just 30 seconds. I'll start by looking at the ending because that is going to be my way out. So right here, I see a rather prominent beat here. So let's listen to what that sounds like. Wonderful, and that's going to end the song for us perfectly. So this beat happens to be the first beat of a bar. One, two, three, four. I'm gonna split the clip here, and I'm gonna keep my eye on that first beat and use that as a reference for where I can join it to. I'll drag that to a spot where that tail ends at just around 30 seconds, and then we can start looking for a way to join them. So what I'm doing is I'm looking for a first beat that I can enter my ending on so that the rhythms overlap. If we see here, there is a very prominent first beat here. Two, three, four. So this beat is going to line up perfectly with this first beat of our ending. So let's see what happens if we stack these two on top of each other. And I'm just gonna play both tracks together. Now, both tracks playing together is a lot of volume, so it's probably busting out the speakers, but. See, that kind of works. So if I trim off the excess there, and we just kind of crossfade this in, you would have something that in most cases would be extremely workable already. Okay, but that's not as seamless as I hoped for it to be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extend the tracks a little, so we can see what's happening around this part that we've kind of synced up the two tracks at and find a better spot to make that transition. So let's say about here.
Okay, right around here, I know on the lower track, there's a bit of a cymbal percussion that kicks in. So if we fade our songs right during that shiny shing, that's going to conceal our edit almost perfectly and make it sound almost intentional. It kind of motivates the transition. So let's look for that part here. I'll solo the later track. Right around here. So we'll fade this track in. So the first thing we hear out of this track is that percussion. Can go a bit later. And then we'll just crossfade this here. I'll trim that first beat out. So what that's done is essentially bridging the gap between these two parts of the song because there is a difference in energy between this earlier part and the ending part we were going to connect it to. So that ending has a higher energy. So having that bit of percussion, that cymbal segues it into that um, higher energy section of the song and it makes it almost undetectable. There, the song just ends beautifully. So what we've just done here is have a three minute song and we've just trimmed it down to just under 30 seconds. Let's look at another example. This one is a real world edit that I made for my review of the Amram P60 lights. You can see me joining the two parts of the track right here. So let me play that transition for you again. Don't mind about dropped frames. By the way, all the tracks that I'm showing you in this video are from Epidemic Sound. So if you like any of them, you can actually use them in your videos as well for free just by signing up for the one month trial. Any videos that you put out during the trial that contains their music will remain safe and protected from any copyright claims even if you decide to cancel after your trial month is over. So essentially free music for a month. Use my link in the description to sign up and you get full access to Epidemic's library for free for a month. So what I did with this track here was again connecting the ending to an earlier part of the track to shorten it. So let me go ahead and do that here. So let's play that back. Right, so right here, we've hit a minor roadblock. Because the song gets a little busy at this point, it's hard to make a clean cut without two parts of the melody stepping over one another. So if I solo this... All right, you can hear some of that big band kicking in and here. So the idea is we just want this part, but there's this part of the melody that's very hard to eliminate. So no matter how hard I try, I can't get a perfect transition because there's two parts of the melody stepping over one another. There, you can hear a bit of it right before it fades out. See, even that, there's a bit of it leaking. So this is one of those times when you go, wow, if only I had the option to remove just the melody and only the melody of this top part here. Well, this is when having access to the stems of a song becomes a monumental convenience. So here's how that works. On Epidemic Sound, every time you download a song, it gives you the option to get it in stems. This means you get the song in its broken down parts. Let me show you. So when you download a song in stems, it comes in all of its broken down parts. So this is the same song. It's got the hip cat swagger, but see, now we have individual access to the bass track. The melody. The drums. And finally, the instruments. So what I like to do is line up the beginning of all the stems in FCP and then create a compound clip, which is similar to nesting in Premiere. So now I have a single track that sounds just like the full mix of the song. But then again, I can go in and modify all the individual stems. So if I go back to the uh, nested compound clip and I make that same edit again. So there. 
and there is that part with the overlapping melody. So I know the problematic part is this bit of melody on the upper clip here. So what I can then do is go in, see, it's just a melody. I can then keyframe this and mute only this part of the melody. So here's how this part sounds like now. So if I go back, that should have solved our problem completely. There, a perfectly clean transition. So I've gone in and just muted only the little section of the melody that's causing us trouble, which is only possible if you have access to the stems of a song. By the way, if you look back at my original edit, those little sound effects that you hear, that's all from Epidemic Sound as well. Now, they've got a lot more than just static sound effects because their sound effects library has an insane collection of over 90,000 effects. Again, if you sign up for the trial month, you get full access to that library for free during the trial period. Now, for a number of reasons, the original ending for a track might not be the way you wish to end a song. Reasons like the song might sound like a completely different song by the end and wouldn't cut well. While in this case, very often you can find some points in the middle of the song that you can end on. For example, this track here, again, a track that I've used in my Synology so, NAS video. Let's get to work. Well, these are really well packaged, I'll give you that. So the opening sounds like this. And the ending sounds like this. So the song's a bit different by the ending. So if I tried to connect those two parts together, I've tried, it just sounded a bit out of place. So without even listening to the full track, we can actually study the waveform to just kind of figure out some other parts of the song that we could potentially end on. See how there's a bit of a dip here, so... So that's like a shiny ding that just kind of rings out on its own, which is a point that we can end the song on. So let's go ahead. Instead of using that final ending here, which we will disregard, we could use this ding to end our song. So let's go ahead and match the beat. Again, I've done a bit of work beforehand and added some markers to where the beats line up so I don't waste too much of your time in this video. But let's go ahead and listen to that. Okay, so right about here. There, that worked quite well, quite naturally. Let's see what that sounds like. Okay, I'd say the transition sounds good and the ending. Okay, just for tidiness, let's apply a fade out right at that tail here. And right there is how you end a song without even using its original ending. But now I'm going to show you my favorite little trick to force a song to end reasonably naturally. Now, what do you mean forcing a song to end? Like, let, let me show you. Let's say, for example, I have this song here. And I want to force this song to end right here on this note. This note. So I want it to end like this. Well, that sounds rather abrupt. Even if I try to fade it out before the next note kicks in, it still sounds like it just dropped off. So now the idea is to add reverb only to that very final note, not the whole song, just the very last note you want it to end on. And I'll show you how that's done. So the way I do it is first we duplicate the final section of the song, well, the cut final section that we want it to end on, say this here, and then we basically make a compound clip and we compound it with some silence. So I've just added a chunk of silence there, which means I can stretch out this clip. Now that's all silence right now. And if I play it, it doesn't sound like anything. 
okay? But all this is extra room for our reverb to ring out. I promise it will make more sense in just a moment. So what we want to do now, we'll keep this original track here, but we'll add reverb only to this secondary track we've just duplicated here. So let's go ahead and add reverb. And I'll just use one of Final Cut's default presets, which is Cathedral. Now, this reverb works best for this effect, in my opinion. So you got to bring up the dry wet mix slider up towards wet. And there, you can see the waveform just kind of doing its thing. So I'd say that works-ish right there at about 60%. And let's listen to only this reverbed clip. So what we've done is we've essentially prolonged that final note. So instead of just dropping dead like it originally would, by adding reverb, we're letting it ring out. So now all we have to do is just kind of mix these two together. So I'm going to slowly fade the original out. And right before that final note, I'll slowly have the reverbed addition kick in. So let's play that. Okay, I'll have it kick in a bit later and a bit more intensely, right when that final note hits. Okay, I'll have this fade out even earlier, I suppose. I'd say that works very well for us. And that was my favorite music editing trick to share. Before you go ahead and try it out for yourself, remember that you've got one month of free music to be claimed. Just sign up for that free trial with Epidemic Sound. If you're creating for your personal channels, then their personal plan is perfect. But if you're creating work for clients, then the commercial plan would be the way to go. Leave a comment if you found today's tips and tricks helpful, and I'll be seeing you in one of my other videos.